ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وسلم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار Indeed, all praise and thanks belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We praise Him, we seek His help, and we seek His forgiveness. <coughs> we seek refuge with Allah from the evil of ourselves and from the evil of our bad deeds. Whomsoever Allah guides, no one can misguide. And whomsoever Allah misguides, then no one can guide. I bear witness that nothing has a right to be worshipped except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is alone and He has no partners. And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, may Allah raise his rank and grant him peace, is his slave and his messenger. O oh, you who believe, fear Allah with a fear that is due to him and do not die except as a Muslim. O oh, mankind, fear your Lord who has created you from a single person. And from that person, he created his wife. And from the two of them, he created many men and women. And fear Allah through whom you demand your mutual rights and do not cut off family ties. Indeed, Allah is an all watcher over you. O you who believe, fear Allah and say that which is correct and upright. If you do this, Allah will rectify for you your deeds and He will forgive you of your sins. And whosoever obeys Allah and His Messenger has attained a great achievement. As for that which follows, indeed, the most truthful speech is the speech of Allah, the Quran, and the best and the finest of guidance. Is the guidance of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. And the worst of affairs are the newly invented matters. Every newly invented matter is an innovation in the religion. And every innovation is misguidance. And every misguidance is in the hellfire. Sincerely advising one another for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one of the hallmark characteristics of the religion of Islam which is binding upon every Muslim to carry out and fulfill. It comes in the hadith, the hadith of Jirir ibn Abdullah radiallahu anhu, he said, بَايَعْتُ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ عَلَىٰ إِقَامَ الصَّلَاةِ وَإِيْتَاءِ الزَّكَاةِ وَالنُصْحِ لِكُلِّ مُسْلِمْ He said, I gave allegiance to the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم to establish the prayer, pay the zakat, and to give advice to every Muslim. And it comes in the, in the Sahih of Imam Muslim. From the hadith of Tamim al-Dari, radiallahu anhu, he said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, al-deen al-nasiha, the religion is a nasiha Qulna liman, the companion said for whom? Qala lillah, wa li kitabihi, wa li rasulihi, wa li a'immati al-muslimina wa ammatihim. The Prophet ﷺ said, It is for Allah, His book, His messenger, the Muslim rulers, and the common folk, meaning from amongst the Muslims. And giving nasiha to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't mean that a person is actually advising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As of course, this is something that is not feasible or even possible. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not in need of being advised by His creation. 
So what's intended by nasiha for Allah is that a person has sincerity towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Such that a person believes in, believes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he testifies to his oneness. And he negates every type of imperfection and deficiency from him subhanahu wa ta'ala while making the religion sincerely for him. Allah Jalla wa Ala said, Ala lillahi deenul khalis. Indeed, the religion is solely for Allah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, wa kitabihi. And it is for his book. And the way that we show sincerity towards the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, first and foremost, is by believing and affirming that the book of Allah, the Qur'an, is the actual word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That was revealed to our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and that is not created. Allah jalla wa ala said, وَإِنْ أَحَدٌ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ اسْتَجَارَكَ فَأَجِرْهُ حَتَّى يَسْمَعَ كَلَمَ اللَّهِ And if one of the polities seeks your protection, then give him protection so that he may hear the word of Allah, or the speech of Allah. Ashik al-Si'idi alihi rahmatullah, he said coming upon the tafsir of this verse, وَفِي هَذَا حُجَّةٌ صَرِيحًا بِمَذْهَبِ أَهْلِ السُّنَّةِ وَالْجَمَاعَةِ الْخَائِلِينَ بِأَنَّ he said, Alihi Rahmatullah, contained in this verse, is a clear proof and evidence for the belief of Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah, who say that the Quran is the speech of Allah and that is not created. And so the end of his speech. Also, some other ways that we show sincerity towards the Book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is by being diligent when it comes to reading the Book of Allah, memorizing. Contemplating and reflecting upon the meanings that are contained therein, and likewise acting in accordance to it, as this is the ultimate reason for why it was revealed. Allah Jalla wa Ala said, "Kitab anzalnahu ilayka mubarakun liyadabbaru ayati wa liyatadakkar ulu albab." A blessed book that we have revealed to you, meaning Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, so that they may contemplate upon its ayat. And so that men of understanding may remember. And the Prophet wasallam said, showing us the superiority and the status of those who adhere to the Book of Allah. Inna lillahi ahlina min al-nafs. The Prophet wasallam said, indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has his own people from amongst mankind. So when the companions heard this, they said, Ya Rasulullah man hum. They said, who are they, O Messenger of Allah? Who are these people who have the status such that they are attributed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Hum ahlul Qur'an, ahlullahi wa khasatuh. He said they are the people of the Qur'an, the people of Allah and His chosen ones. And perhaps many of us when we hear this term, ahlul Qur'an, the people of the Qur'an, the first thing that comes into our mind is a person who has memorized the entire Qur'an. Or a person who is proficient when it comes to the recitation of the Qur'an. However, the scholars, they mention that it is not a condition for a person to memorize the, the entire Qur'an to be considered from Ahlul Qur'an. As long as the person is diligent when it comes to reading the Qur'an, a day doesn't go by except that he reads something from the Qur'an. And he memorizes something from the Qur'an. And he contemplates and reflects upon its means. And he acts in, in accordance to it then this individual is considered as a person of the Qur'an even if he did not memorize the, the Qur'an in its entirety. As for those who just read the Qur'an and they memorize the Qur'an, you could ask them any rule when it comes to ahkam al tajweed and they could give you a response. But when it comes to their behavior and the way that they interact with others, then you see that the Qur'an has little to no effect upon them. These type of individuals, when the Qur'an does not affect a person's life, it does not affect his character, and the way that he interacts with the creation, then the reality is that the Qur'an is going to be a proof and evidence against him on Yawm Qiyam. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, وَالْقُرْآنُ حُجَّةٌ لَكْ أَوْ عَلَيْكَ He said the Qur'an is either a proof for you or against you. أَقُولُ مَا تَسْمَعُونَ وَالْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ الحمد لله رب العالمين 
والعاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له هو يتولى الصالحين وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم أما بعد As for giving nasihah to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم that was intended is that a person believes and affirms that Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the final prophet and messenger who was sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to all of mankind and jinkind. And likewise we believe and affirm that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that everything that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam informed us concerning whether it's connected to the unseen or it's connected to things that took place in the past or things that took, are going to take place in the future. It's incumbent that we believe and we affirm all of this. And we testify to the fact that it's the truth. Also when it comes to being sincere towards the Prophet wasallam, another way that we achieve this is by adhering to the commandment of the Prophet wasallam, And staying far away from that which he forbade. Allah Jalla wa'ala said, وَمَا آتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولُ فَخُذُوهُ Whatever the Messenger gives you, then take it. وَمَا نَهَاكُمْ عَنْهُ فَانْتَهُ and whatever he forbids you from, then stay away from it. The Prophet sallallahu said, وَلِأَئِمَّةِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ And it is for the Muslim leaders. And the way that we give nasiha to the Muslim leaders is by cooperating with them upon the truth. And listening and obeying them in that which does not entail disobedience to Allah Jalla wa'ala. As the Prophet sallallahu said, لا طاعة لمخلوق في في معصية الخالق. He said صلى الله عليه وسلم that there is no obedience to the creation in disobedience to the creator. So as long as the Muslim leaders are not telling their people to disobey Allah subhanahu wa taala, as long as the Muslim rulers are not telling their people to do things that are in clear opposition to the religion, then it is a religious obligation to listen and to obey them. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said. وَالسَّمْعِ وَالطَّاعَةِ وَإِنْ تَأَمَّرَ عَلَيْكُمْ عَبْدِ He said to hear, to listen and to obey, even if the person over you is asleep. And this issue when it comes to listening and obeying the Muslim rulers, unfortunately, is an issue that many Muslims are very ignorant concerning. When we talk about this issue of listening to the Muslim rulers and those things that do not entail disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you find many Muslims who criticize the Muslim rulers in the open. They criticize them because of the sins that they might be committing. They criticize them for things that are not correct. And this, as we already mentioned, there are proof and evidences from the Quran and the Sunnah that state that we have to obey them and that which does not entail disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the sad reality is many people who do this, many of the people who criticize the Muslim rulers, because they say that they are allowing music concerts to take place in their country. These same individuals, many of them, you find them going to the club on Friday and Saturday night. Many of the Muslims who criticize the Muslim rulers because they allow for intoxicants to be sold in their country. These same individuals are not just buying the intoxicants, but they're drinking. So how can a person have this double standard when it comes to himself? And as the saying goes, in Kanabaytuka min zujaj, فَلَا تَرْمِ النَّاسِ بِالْحِجَارِ If your house is made out of glass, then you shouldn't be throwing rocks at others. So a person should not have this double standard when it comes to himself. And the Messenger alayhi salatu was salam, and before we mention this, this is another issue that's very dangerous, that many Muslims fall into, and that is ex excommunicating Muslim leaders from the religion of Islam due to major sins. This is very dangerous. The Prophet ﷺ said, إِذَا قَالَ الرَّجُلِ يَا أَخِي يَا كَافِرٌ فَقَدْ بَاءَ بِهِ أَحَدُهُمَا The Prophet ﷺ said that if a, a Muslim, if a person says to his brother, O oh, disbeliever, then surely one of them is such. And another word of the hadith, he says, Allah alayhi wa sallam, إِنْ كَانَ كَمَا قَالْ وَإِلَّا رَجَعَتْ عَلَيْهِ Either it is as this person has said, or it goes back to him. 
So to excommunicate another Muslim from the religion of Islam, whether that person is a Muslim leader or just a common folk from amongst the Muslims, this is very dangerous. This is not the methodology of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. Rather, this is the methodology of the Khawaj. The methodology of Ahl Sunnah when it comes to dealing with the faults and the mistakes of the leaders is that they should be advised in private. No one should be advising the public to have uprisings and revolting against the Muslim leaders. This is going to lead to bloodshed. It's going to lead to chaos. Rather, it's incumbent upon us to supplicate and to make dua for the Muslim rulers that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides them and rectifies their affairs. Because I guarantee you, the vast majority of the people who criticize the Muslim rulers, if they were in the same situation, if they were in their shoes, I guarantee you, they wouldn't be able to do a better job. So we should make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide them and to rectify them. And likewise, it's incumbent upon the Muslims to be patient with their harms and their oppression. And this is why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, مَنْ كَرِهَ مِنْ أَمِيرِهِ شَيْئًا فَلْيَصْبِرْ he says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that whoever hates something from his Muslim leader, then he should be patient. فَإِنَّهُ مَنْ خَرَجَ مِنَ السُّلْطَانِ شِبْرًا مَا تَمِيتَةً جَاهِلِيًا The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, whoever goes against the Muslim authority, يعني the, the distance of, of a handspan, then he dies like a person who died in jahiliyyah. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, وَعَمَّتِهِمْ and they're common folk, meaning the common folk from amongst the Muslims. And the way that we give nasiha to the common folk from amongst the Muslims is by educating them as it relates to the affairs of the religion. And commanding them with the good and forbidding them from that which is evil. And likewise dealing with the Muslims and interacting with the Muslims in a manner that we would like to be dealt with and interacted with. And likewise desiring and wanting good for all of the Muslims wherever they may be. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, as it comes in the well-known hadith of Anas, radiallahu anhu, لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يحب لأخيه ما يحب لنفسه That one of you will never truly believe until you love for your brother that which you love for yourself. اللهم إنا نسألك الهدى والتقى والعفاف والغنى We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guidance, piety, chastity, and contentment. ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار. We ask our Lord for the good of this world and the good of the hereafter and to save us from the punishment of the hellfire. اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين وأذل الشرك والمشركين ودمر أعداءك أعداء الدين والحمد لله رب العالمين.